Hi, let's see, where do we leave off in working on this Mr. Peabody 2D side scrolling game? I'm pressing play here and I think we have it that we can move him back and forth. And that when Mr. Peabody moves out of the camera range, the camera is supposed to follow him, but why isn't it doing it? Ugh, I think I changed something. Let's see, in the script, yes, I have to supply what the camera is. There we go. All right, so press play. Yeah, so the other night we got it working that the camera follows him. As you can see, this is like the camera's view and when he goes past a certain place on the screen, the camera follows. But when he gets up to here, he can't um, bump over this bump, it's just too big. As you can see, there's like a collision detector on him that's kind of circular, but this is too big for him to bump over. So. I guess now is a good time to add in the jump functionality. So, Mr. Peabody here, let's go to the script and let's see what we need. Um, we're probably going to need a public float to say how powerful his jump will be. So, I'll call it like jump force. And let's see, I plan to do a jump force based on using the rigid body, like applying a force upward. So let's try six first. And that's the first step. Now the second step is we're gonna have to do a jump control. So let's see, let's do in the update, we have move control, camera control. So the camera follows Mr. Peabody. Now in the middle here, let's just add um, jump control. And for jump, we're going to check for, let's say, the up arrow. Yeah, let's check for the vertical, the vertical axis up arrow. So float vert equals input dot get axis. We could check for a key stroke, but I just want it to work with the joystick. Keep it simple. So the vert, so if vert is um, greater than 0 0.1, give it a little bit of flexibility in case the joystick has like a wobbly value. If it's greater than 0 0.1 F, then this will be indicating that, ooh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I don't want to use this because then if I'm holding the joystick up, the signal of jump will keep happening over and over. What I want to do is a key down. So if um, input dot get key down, and I could use key codes. So I type in key code, and the first one I want is the arrow up. So is that spelled? There it is, up arrow. Arrow up. So you move in left and right, and then up arrow would be a jump. If that is true, or input dot get key down, key code dot W, because you could use the WASD, and W would be up key, equals true. Then I'm going to do a jump up. So do I have um, a reference to the rigid body yet of my P body? Let me see. So here's P body. He has a rigid body on him, but I don't have a reference to the rigid body in the script. So what I'll do here is I'll just have private rigid body 2D, because this is a 2D game, and equals null. And then in the start, I'll assign that a value. So RB equals this dot get component rigid body 2D. Okay, so now I have a pointer to the component. Now over here, then I could use the rigid body dot add force. Ah, okay, in which direction? Add force takes a vector two, so I'm going to do the vector two dot up. So jumping up direction. And how much jumping power is jump force? So I'll add a force upward by jump force and there's 
If I press comma, there's different kinds of modes of force. Let's see what they are. Force mode 2D dot. And there's only two of them. So force adds a force to the rigid body using its mass. Impulse adds an instant force to the body using its mass. So well, they both use the mass. So I'll just say impulse. And what's the mass of my character and the rigid body? It's a mass of one. Okay, and there's a gravity to pull them back down of, of one. So here I add a force of six. Let's see how that acts when I press play. So process the script. Good, there's no errors. And then I'll press play. And let's see about this jumping that we have here. So there we go. And if I press jump, um, that's the up. That's pretty good. You think he's um, coming down too slow? Then I guess I could see if I increase the gravity here to five. What is that going to be like if he has a gravity of five? Click back over here. Oh, then he really doesn't jump much at all. So that's a five. Then I can increase this to 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I could play around. So say this was 10. That's not a high jump. Let's go 15. Okay, so I'm going to have, let me remember these values. Gravity scale is 5 and jump force is 15. So let me press stop. So it says jump force to 15 and the gravity scale 5. All right, so there, now I have the jump. So now I could move over these things. I kind of just bump over them, as you can see. But then this one is too high. Oh, I did bump over that, but this one's too high. So now I could jump and get on that one and jump and get on that one and jump to my death. And so we have the jump and he can move. Um, what do we do next, guys? Let's see. Let's take a look at Mr. Peabody here. He does have his bones. And we could add some animations to him. So let's do that next. Let's do some animations for Mr. Peabody. So I select Mr. Peabody over here in the hierarchy window. And then in, I want to open up my animation window to do some keyframe animations. So it's this one right here, Control-6, Animation. and here, with Mr. Peabody selected, I could, it says to begin animating Peabody, I just have to press create to create a new clip file. So I press create, and this is my assets folder of the game, and I'm going to give him a first animation for idle, for when he's just standing and I'm not moving him around. So the way this works is I just first these are the keyframes here this is time i just turn on the this is the name of the animation file right here idle i just turn on record button and say at position zero i want to leave them just like this and then i move forward in time a little bit and maybe he's going to go up uh let's see where he started now i'm going to pay attention to this grid over here because this is on the ground right and then if i move forward he comes up just a little bit from the ground let me make it just a little bit more like a whole grid size and just for cuteness here let me just have his head kind of squish in and also turn his feet so it's kind of like he's using his feet to go up and down. So let's see, it's like up. All right, so now to return back and make a looping animation, let me just copy these cells. I just select them and then say Control C. Then I'll put this time frame and Control V. So now I have something that could loop. Let's see how it looks when I press play. All right, it's going pretty fast. So we could just do this and stretch out the time of it to, 
I don't know, 0.35 seconds. Let's see how that looks. Mm -hmm. I think maybe I'll make him go up a little higher. So let me pick this, these cells over here. When he went up and he only went up by one cell and his head squished, I'm going to make him go up a little further to two cells. All right, and let's see that. That's all right. Maybe I'll make also another little change here when he's in this up position that his head maybe stays looking down. Let's see. Oh, then I'm going to have to like get the copy of the first frame again. Um, I think just before he comes down, I'm going to have a little bit of a... Uh, Oopsie, not that. Undo, can I undo? Thank you. I think I'll have a little bit of, maybe his head uh, squishing like wow, for the, the pressure of hitting down. And then these cells I'll have to copy again. So let me copy this again, Control V and Control C. Oh, darn it. Got that wrong. Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. And let's put them on the ground so we can see how it looks. Oh, or I could just press play. Oh, his head's kind of jerking. That's not good. Where's that jerk coming from? Is it this here? If I take this out, what will happen? Um, press play. Yeah, I think it was that. All right, so let's just leave the idle animation like that. And that's the first animation that we make. And if we look back in the project window for Mr. Peabody here, and here is the idle. I called it idle. That's the idle animation for Mr. Peabody. And now Mr. Peabody, he's beginning to have a couple of files here. So I think I'm going to put him in a folder just to keep things organized. So let me create a new folder here and call it Peabody. And I'll put his animations, his prefab, I'll put them all in here together. Um, I guess I'll put the script in there too. I'll go back to the animation window, make sure I have Mr. Peabody selected. And that's his up and down animation. Um, let me just bring this character down to the floor so I could like measure things better. Now I want to have like a moving animation for him moving back and forth. So let's create a new clip over here. And we'll just call this move. And maybe I could use the same move animation to move backward or forward and let's get zoomed in again so i can see the grid and help me make a decision turn on the record and here at this position i guess what i'll have him do is like his feet will just flip flop so his foot will come up and then over here um make this foot come back down, control C, control V. And when this foot comes down, we'll have this foot, I'm still on that frame, I'll have this foot come up, so it's like a speeder switching. And then finally, we can have everything come back to normal, control C, control V. So, Boom, boom. Hmm. His feet just kind of flop. And maybe when his feet flop, when they're up here at this position, let's have his head stretch, like from the jump. And maybe his body will come up a little. No, 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 no. Of his body. Ah, I don't know. Let's see. Press play. 
Oh, his head's popping again. Let's get this over here. Control C, Control V, press play. Okay, he's kind of tapping along. And I guess it's going too fast, so let's stretch out the time. So the idle is at 0.35. Let's make his walk maybe that long. That's too slow. 0.3. I guess that's okay. We'll see how it looks when he's moving. So now I got two animations. I got a move and an idle. Um, let's put these to work, these first two animations. So press stop, go back to my project, and I'm going to look at the animation controller, which is this. So what happened to Mr. Peabody when I added these two animations? Something did happen to the game object. And what happened is it added, when I created the first animation for him, Unity automatically added the animator to Mr. Peabody so that it's going to use the animation controller to play whatever animation that says. And why? What's going on? Why is this way up here and he's way down here, guys? What did I do? I think something I got messed up here. Let's see what happens when I press play. Oh, okay. It was just a glitch. So there he is. He's playing his idle animation. Because if I double click on the animator, it opens up this window over here, which I it's called the animator window, not the animation window. And here is uh, these boxes are the different animations we made for him. And they Unity automatically added them to the animation controller when we created them in the animation window. And this line here is the entry point for when the game starts, the entry point for the game starts, and the line points to play the idle animation. And we see the idle animation is playing and it kind of plays over and over again. And that's because if I click here on the actual idle animation, then in the inspector, you could see that loop time is checked. So that's why it plays over and over again. So by default, when it's making the animations, it looks like Unity's saying loop time. And the same thing for move, loop time. And for me, that's fine, because the idle animation, I do want it to loop over and over. The only thing is we have to have something here to control, make a transition from idle to move, and then from move back to idle. So um, I just added those lines by using the make transition. And then I could draw, I could drag the line to where I want to make transition to. So this one here is to make a transition from idle to move. And this one goes back to idle. So what happens now if I press play, now that I put these transitions here, so the entry point's going to play idle, and then it's going to go to move and then go back to idle. What, what's going to happen? So I should play the idle animation once. And what the heck is going on? Something is wrong with my collider. All right. The time keeps on ticking. So, um, well, let me just take this off and see if it was this. Press play again. OK, he's on the ground. Let me also make sure that See, this doesn't make any sense to me that this is way up here. Something happened. Mr. Peabody, uh, let me take you out and put you back in again. Delete. Let me take the prefab, put the pre prefab back in. See, that's one of the great things about the prefab is that it stores what I was doing. Oh, I just noticed here at all these ground objects, there's a lot of them. So what I'll do is I'll just put them in a in an empty game object so it could organize it. And I'll just call that the level. So let me call this empty game object the level. Dude. And then all these ground objects. So it's easy to, I'm gonna start having a lot of objects when I make this level. I'll put them in here so that they're all together in there. Okay, ooh, you know what? Before I put that in there, I should have, let me take it out again. Level, let me just, reset the position and everything and now i could put this in here and yeah just so the numbers are nice and neat all right so here's mr peabody and now he has this thing here does he still have his animations and stuff Ooh, he doesn't so i'll just have to add it 
Here's the animation controller. <sighs> All right, maybe I'll do it like this. Add component. Um, is there an I kind of can't remember. Is it? Is there an animation uh, controller? It's in. Where is that thing? It's not in there. Oh, great. Now I can't remember where I get the animation controller from. Miscellaneous. There it is. Animator. Okay, so now I put the animator on, and the controller is not assigned. So let me just drag that on there. So now we should have the controller. And now if we press play, there you go. All right, so this looks better. And I was going back to where I started. See, sometimes you have problems. You just got to think them through. So it's going to play idle, and then I'm going to make a transition to play the move. So let's see what happens. I press play. Pay attention. Idle, and then when he moved, he fell right through the floor. Why is that happening? Oh, don't tell me it messed up his thing again. Um, nope, his body's fine. Let me take a look at this when I press play. Where the collider is. Oh, look at that. He moves off the collider. It's possible that when I had this move animation that one of my things was moving him off the collider. So let's see, here's the move animation. Let me pick Mr. Peabody. And could it be that one of these things, like this one over here, this one, this one, this one, was messing up his, um, his feet? Oh, that's the idle. Here's the move. And here's one with position, rotation and rotation. Oh man, I don't know what happened. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'll just do this animation over again. So let me delete the move one. Okay, now go to Mr. P body and let me do create the move one over again. So move and then turn on the recorder and here in the first position, I think what I'll do this time is his head will go like this and his body will come up um, and I'll kind of flap his feet from here like this to my next frame over here where his feet flap the other way and maybe his head kind of flaps like this and then after that flap oh i guess he's gonna have to come down mm -hmm. Whew, back down so let me copy this one control c control v Ooh, what does that look like? <laughs> okay, stretch that out a little bit more and press play. Okay, so that would be like walking forward, I guess. All right, now let's press, um, let's go to the animation controller and make sure I have that animation in there. It's smooth. <laughs> All right, let's press play, see what happens. See, and he keeps playing the move animation. And it looks like when he does the move animation, he does, hey man, what happened to my camera? Oh, you know what it was? I kind of dragged the, um, this again. So here in Peabody, I have to reassign the camera again. There we go. Ah, oh, you know what else? My jump force and everything, it just reset back. Oh well. This is how it is when you're working on a game tonight. Press play. We're going along the road. The camera's following now. What happens over here? Jump up. And he stays in the air so long. So I do think I want to fix that gravity scale. Put it to 5. Give him a little bit more strength on the jump. 12. And now I'm going to apply that as the prefab. Let me press play. So, I mean, this is how it is. When you're making a game, you literally, something that you do in the game over and over again, it could be that you have to do, you spend the night just for some simple little thing. All right, so now I have some animations going. 
And let me take a stop here. Um, what we did was we added some animations for Mr. Peabody and some jumping. And in the next video, or when I next do this, let's see what I do next time. I think I'll add something that um, he could pick up and maybe he could pick up and use it as a weapon. So let's, let's do that next video.